have sought information for a living. That is to say that ever since he returned from Korea, after having served with the armed forces, he had been working as a private investigator in Montreal. William Hamilton, a rich industrialist, had gotten in touch with him regarding a simple vandalism issue. Nothing to write home about. Not worth hiring a private eye either, just so he can drive for hours on rough roads. But that's how it had always been. The client pays, Carl gets it done. They had set up to meet at the general store, his client's business. Well, actually, the entire village had William Hamilton's name written all over it. When the roads were bad, muddy, or snowed in, it was customary around these parts to close them off. But it was also customary to ignore those signs entirely and drive there anyway. Hamilton never mentioned a road-blocking barrier. Why was it needed here in the back of beyond? That would, however, be a mystery for another day. Carl had waited long enough for someone to come and raise it. Still not a soul in sight. There was no point in waiting any longer. Carl had to figure this one out by himself. Hamilton is waiting for Carl in the general store. It was time for him to get down to business. William Hamilton enjoyed a lavish country house built in the very heart of the northern forests, not too far from here. The local populace was divided when it came to the affluent man. Some saw a wealthy philanthropist dedicated to improving the region's economy. Others, an aging Englishman who would do anything to further his fortunes. And those ones hated him enough to go on about scheming against him. Hamilton had recently acquired a few local businesses, but the last straw was the reopening of a mine, which gave rise to a wave of protests and threats from the Cree people. Given these circumstances, Carl reckoned that a good number of people must be feeling compelled to oppose Hamilton in one way or another. So far, only the industrialist's house had been attacked, but soon enough, Carl thought, the target would become the man himself. Carl needed to get out of there. The cold and the pain required urgent care. had taken off. It 
but still best to check it out and leave nothing to chance. Carl needed help. It was a small, locked box engraved with the letters WH. Carl thought about taking it. Nothing was to be left to chance. Such heart-wrenching Nordic poetry, that was. But Carl didn't care much about flowery language. This deep in the country, his last hope was to find an abandoned garage. Or a farm by the roadside. His life depended on it. Complaining was not in Carl's nature. It would take more than light injuries to interrupt his investigation. Carl wondered how long he would have to endure this skin-stinging cold. Polaroid, Carl's long-standing and faithful ally, has seen a share of husbands caught red-handed cheating. There's always something out there waiting to be snapped away. carried his log on him, in which he scribbled down thoughts and leads alike during the course of his investigations.
spread out on a few acres of untouched forest, bellowing caribou, everlasting snow, and undefiled lakes. The Manistan region was no tourist hub. It was said to have been populated for millennia by Cree people, and ever since the industrial era, by the metal mining industry. The truck was running on fumes. Good thing that the general store was close by. surrender their divine nectar so easily. In all likelihood, they had to be switched on from inside the store. A milkman had to drive by every week to fill the bottles. The fresh milk indicated a recent visit. Carl had no trouble recognizing his employer. He had been killed. There was no need to be a detective to figure that out. But only a detective could have noticed that the killer had to have been very close that the fatal blow had been given before the victim even realized. Carl knew that Gilles Lachance was in charge of the general store. That made him one of Hamilton's employees. A very angry employee, as Carl could plainly see. The snowstorm pummeled everything in its path. Carl was not surprised when he heard no tone. Maintaining his composure, Carl recalled something from his military training. Wolves always stay away from populated areas. Wait, was it about bears? Carl was no electrician, but he could identify a wiring problem when he saw one. Carl was used to strange phenomena, but a chunk of ice like this? As if an iceberg came out of the ground? That was a first. Something fell to the bottom of the box. Amateur hunters showing some pride at having killed a nice pelted beast. With men like this roaming the area, wolves would become extinct within 10 years, Carl thought. The note explained that the garage and the store couldn't be supplied with electricity at the same time.
Carl felt that the store and its surroundings still held their secrets, and he didn't like to miss out. Hate was in the air. Seems like some villagers barely tolerated each other. inside that envelope. Carl was taken aback. He knew this address. It was said to be the address of the P.O. box for the Canadian Secret Service. Carl felt a chill down his spine and had a terrifying realization. If Hamilton was dead, then who was going to pay him? <laughs> 